don't move to Sacramento, California, if you can't stand these five things. And we're starting right now. Welcome, my friends, to Living in Northern California. I'm Wes Moody, the host of Living in Northern California, realtor with Realty One Group Complete, serving Northern California. Very blessed to have the best clients in real estate, and I'd be honored to help you and your family with your real estate needs. Just give me a call or a text at 916-382-2510. It's 916-382-2510, and I'd love to talk with you about it. So the number one reason why you may want to skip Sacramento, especially if you're coming from somewhere like the Bay Area, would be the oppressive heat that we have here in Sacramento. Now, I was born and raised in Sacramento, and you can get some relief by playing in the river or going to Folsom Lake, but it gets hot here. We routinely have 100 degree plus days during the summer into early autumn. And if you're used to a cool, cooler climate, uh, it's gonna be quite a change for you. You better get used to having, uh, to being indoors and having good air conditioning on those hot summer days. It just gets to be a lot, takes some getting used to. I've been living in Sac the Sacramento area for my entire life, and I'm still not totally used to the heat. And uh, a lot of people, you know, could be a deal breaker for you. I don't think it's as bad as uh, the heat I experienced, say, when I was visiting Dallas. That heat was much worse than the Sacramento heat. But Sacramento does have very hot summers, routinely over 100 degrees. So number one, the oppressively hot summers that we have here in Sacramento. Number two, if you're coming from a place that has really great public transit and you don't like to drive, then Sacramento may not be the place for you. If you can't stand that, Sacramento may be a deal breaker. Uh, you're gonna need a car or an Uber, but uh, the public transportation system here, RT, and some of the other out outlying areas like Roseville and Yuba Sutter, have, uh, you know, at least for commuters, some decent commuter lines uh, that tend to run, you know, in the early mornings and, and the afternoons, evenings. And mainly those serve like state workers, persons that work in downtown Sacramento. So it's okay for that. But if you're the type of person that's accustomed to where you live now, hopping on the bus or the trolley or the light rail, whatever you call it, to go see a movie or have a night on the town, you're going to be really disappointed by Sacramento. And I do want to add that, um, and we'll get to nightlife in a second here, but if you're going to downtown or midtown Sacramento to enjoy a night on the town, downtown Sacramento and that whole area is a DUI magnet. So you don't have public transit options to get down there to have a good time. Be aware of that, drink responsibly. There's been a number of high, high profile DUI arrests with certain assembly persons that uh, that were not from Sacramento that had even been warned not to even think about drinking and driving, which you shouldn't anyway, but I digress. Point is, there's not a system in place really as far as public transit is concerned for you to be able to go have a night on the town and then hop on the bus or trolley or whatever it is and head home. You really are gonna have to be using Uber, Lyft, or taxis um, if you want to enjoy a responsible night on the town. Number two, lack of public transit. Number three, Sacramento may not have uh, as busy a nightlife as many other cities, for example, San Francisco or San Jose, places in the Bay Area. May seem like, you know, Sacramento may seem like a very sleepy town to you if you're coming from those places. Um, 
And if you're coming from, say, somewhere like Las Vegas or L.A., um, Sacramento is going to really seem like a cow town to you. There, there are some places that, uh, that you can go. I mean, there's the IMAX theater in downtown Sacramento. I like to, uh, I like to catch a movie there every once in a while. But there's just, there's just not a lot, uh, aside from, you know, the occasional Kings game or some special event that may be coming to Golden One Center. You can go explore K Street, but you'd be surprised how dead K Street can be sometimes and some of the different uh, eateries and, and uh, bars and pubs that there are. It's really, really pretty sleepy compared to bigger cities. So if you're accustomed to that and that's something that you expect or would like, then yeah, Sacramento might seem like kind of a sleepy town. Hey, if you're thinking about moving to Sacramento, check out this video I did on five things you need to know before moving to Sacramento. And uh, that'll expand on some other items that maybe we didn't cover in this video. Number four, Sacramento is very flat. So my father for a time lived in San Diego and San Diego is absolutely beautiful with its canyons and its terrain. And it's just very visually interesting and very beautiful in many ways with its hills and such. Well, Sacramento is not like that at all. Sacramento is very flat. The terrain can be quite boring sometimes. And, uh, you know, it's just a very different vibe when you live in a place that, that, that is very flat. So uh, you may be surprised by it if you're if you're coming from a different area or you've got a job transfer or you're looking into Sacramento, just how different that is. It's it's the way that neighborhoods are divided up in, say, a place like a San Diego or in the Bay Area. It's very different in Sacramento. And there's not as much separation because of the topography as there is in either San Diego or somewhere like the Bay Area. So number four, Sacramento, it's very flat. And number five, COVID policy. Now I've talked about this in other videos. Now where I live is I live in the Yuba Sutter area, which is about 35 minutes north of Sacramento. And here's a playlist if you wanna find out all about living in Yuba Sutter. But one of the reasons I moved up to Yuba Sutter was, uh, well, number one, because it reminded me more of the way Sacramento was when I was a kid. I, I guess I have a thing for cow towns. What can you say? Number two, I kind of like the rugged individualist approach that uh, many people in Yuba Sutter take to life. And uh, COVID policy, when, when COVID was happening, are we allowed to say COVID on YouTube? Anybody? Tuesday. I guess we are until they change the rules again. I guess the WHO is the authority on that, even though nobody elected those people, but uh, I digress. So, of course, I grew up in Sacramento and I have family in Sacramento. And during COVID, it was like night and day how Yuba Sutter handled it versus how Sacramento handled it. And in Yuba Sutter, People were just kind of like, well, I mean, if you got a pre-existing condition, um, you know, stay home. And it's your responsibility to figure that out. As where in Sacramento, uh, there was a lot of shaming happening. The there was a culture of like people shaming you if you didn't want to necessarily follow the rules or whatever. And they took things very seriously in Sacramento with the lockdowns and everything. Even the culture there, there was a culture of fear. It was very palpable. As where uh, in Yuba Sutter, it was very different. It was it, There was not as much fear. Things opened up a lot more quickly. Uh, there was a lot of resistance to the governor's emergency powers. Uh, our assemblyman, Jim Gallagher, uh, spearheaded the effort to repeal that. So it, maybe if you're coming from the Bay Area, you wouldn't, that wouldn't be much of a difference to you. If, that's some, if you thought that that was the way that should have been handled and that, uh, you know, in order to 
save people that have pre-existing conditions. We, ha we must make people be locked down. We must shut businesses down because government knows best and people must be made to do it or they will not do it as opposed to the Yuba Sutter approach, which was here's the information. This is the risk. These are the actions that you need to take. And it's on you to um, assess your own risk level and either do this or don't do this. So the COVID policy was very different. And I think now that that's mostly in the rearview mirror, maybe people have different opinions on that. But if something like that happens again, that's how it was handled in the past. And that's our video. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you're looking to buy or sell real estate in the greater Sacramento area, love to hear from you. You can call or text me 916-382-2510. It's 916-382-2510. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for our latest videos. See ya!